Uh, I do have to say, I do have to say, I'm rather enjoying this as my office. I have to say, when they say get it, that you should try to get an office with a view, I really, I'm not sure this is what uh, people are talking about, but I do believe it is what they should be talking about. All you need to do, put a little chair right here, put a little desk, grab your computer, and this, this can be what you're looking at all day while you're tip-tapping away doing whatever. And kind of the ironic thing being, the ironic thing being, is that if you've got a nice little smartphone you can tether to, uh, that's actually not a joke. <laughs> you could come out here into the middle of nowhere and do your work in this, this beautiful environment over here. Especially when you get a tiny little computer like I got. So you can fit it into your nice little messenger bag. So this is the messenger bag I was talking about yesterday. And as you can see in my messenger bag, I've got my nice little MacBook 13 inch. I got a bottle of water in there. I got my headphones. So when I go to Panera later today to do some editing, I have all of my equipment with me. So hopefully, hopefully this is how Eli is going to be doing work going into the future. It's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. I like this. I like this. I don't, you know, not having to worry about what the next CPU is, not having to worry about the GPUs or virtualization or any of that kind of stuff. I like this new world of duck hunting that I am part of. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to talk about the ducks. The ducks. I've been getting a lot of comments in the comment section in the last couple of videos where people said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought Eli was joking about ducks. I didn't think he actually meant he was going to go out and film ducks. Who the hell goes out and films ducks? And why, why is that an appropriate thing for the person formerly known as Eli the computer guy to do? Well today, today, we are going to talk about what a duck is and why ducks are important. So to be clear, to be clear, as we go forward with failed normal re-ducks. <laughs> um, yes, basically I'm going to be going out into the world and I am going to be filming ducks. Not just ducks, there will be buffalo ducks, and there will be deer ducks, and there'll be little bird ducks. Can you see that bird as he flies away? But basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going out into the real world, as I was doing right now, and tape five minutes or video five minute uh, clips of nature as it is. Uh, so I'm gonna try to go for a lot of animals. Uh, people really like animals, but also any kind of other natural clips. Waterfalls, and mountains, and fog rolling in in the morning, and clouds rolling out at night, and uh, all of those type of videos. And basically what I'll do is I will post those on the failed normal channel. So I have three channels, a lot of people don't realize that. I have the Eli the Computer Guy channel, I have the uh, this channel, uh, Failed Normal Redux, and then I have the Failed Normal channel, which has about 10,000 subscribers at this point. Uh, and so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting those scenery clips onto the Failed Normal channel. Now you're sitting there and you're thinking, you're like, okay, well that sounds weird. Maybe it's cool, I don't know, because that's what you're doing, right? You're sitting there thinking, you're like, oh, okay, so Eli's going to be doing uh, scenery videos. And he's going to be putting it onto uh, to one of his YouTube channels. That could be interesting, or probably not. You're probably sitting there, let's be honest, you're sitting there going, that could be interesting. Probably won't be, but it could be. I, I get it, I understand. Uh, but then you're sitting there and you're wondering, well, what does that have to do with this particular channel? And it all comes down to the ducks. Um, so, with my life story, with my CV, going back all the way till I was, since I was a kid, um, I've been, always been one of those people to just get up and do things in the world, right? If you told me that there was an opportunity, if I was able to go for that opportunity, I went for that opportunity. So when I was like nine years old, eight, nine, ten years old, um, my mother lived down in Virginia Beach uh, where there were lots of bars and people drank a lot of alcohol. And this was back in the days before uh, there were curbside pickup for recycling. Recycling was this, was this newfangled thing most people didn't do. And so I found out this amazing thing. I found out this amazing thing when I was a kid. Did you realize people literally threw away cash? 
they threw away money. All you had to do was go out there, collect the money, deposit the money off at the local roller recycling center, and they would give you cash. And it was great, it was great. I would go out in the morning and go along the beach with a big old trash bag and pick up all the beer cans, all the beer cans, some of the soda cans that were around, throw it into a big old trash bag. And then one day, then one day, I was sitting there, and I was on the beach, I was collecting all of these, uh, these aluminum cans, and I looked across, I looked across the beach and across the road, and I saw these things called bars. Still didn't really know what a bar was. I had zero interest in alcohol. But what I did realize is that those bars, they served beer. When people got done with their beer cans, they had to throw the beer away. And so I went, huh, I wonder if behind those bars, there are, there are garbage containers full of beer cans. And so I would go and I would get into the, uh, the garbage containers uh, behind the, uh, the bars and it was the mother load. So many cans, so much money just sitting there for anybody to pick up. And I was the lucky kid to realize that it was there. And so I would go and I would pick up all the cans and then I would drag it back to the apartment. My mother would roll her eyes and then we would go off to the recycling center every few days. And essentially for that, I mean, it's like an eight, nine, 10 year, I forget exactly how old I was, but as a kid, as a, truly as a kid, I mean, I was making five bucks a day. <laughs> I was earning my $5 a day. All I had to do was go out there and pick up cans. So later in life, later, uh, you know, I did the whole uh, flea market thing. So one of the things I found out was that a lot of people just want to get rid of their crap. Uh, it's not really worth money to them. Again, this is one of the things with economics is, is how much is somebody's time worth? And so what I found out was a lot of people just wanted crap gone. They just wanted crap out of their house. They didn't care. Again, adults didn't care about $5, $10, even $25. They just much preferred the crap be gone. So I go, and I would take all these people's crap, then I'll go to the flea market, pay my $15 for a stall for the day, and sell the crap that I was given to other people who desperately wanted crap. Um, and that worked out pretty well for me. I was able to buy, that was how I was able to buy my Sega Genesis. Sega! Remember that? Most of you probably don't. Um, anyways, um, Basically, by, I think it was like two months, two months of going out to the flea market, selling other people's stuff, got me enough money to buy my Sega Genesis. Then later, started selling candy in school. All the kids around, you know, all of them were hungry. None of them ate proper meals in the morning. So of course, of course, when you don't need a proper meal, you need a Snicker bar. Found out I could go to Sam's, buy a Snickers bar for 20 to 25 cents, sell it for 50 cents. That was 25 cents profit for every candy bar I sold. And people were buying them by like two, three, four dollars worth. That was some good money back then, right? And what I found through life is I just kept on going and going doing that, right? So I went out there, done the computer and the technology thing, and I've sold, installed, maintained websites and surveillance systems and uh, uh, networking, obviously, and servers and computer labs and the whole nine yards, right? And basically what I have found in life, what I have found in life to be true, is that it's basically all the exact same crap, right? When you look back, when I was a kid, diving into dumpsters, searching for those, uh, those aluminum cans so that I could trade them in for cold hard cash, that really, that, that really right there, that is 90 fucking 5% of success right there, right? You sit there and you go, hmm, hmm. What are people willing to pay money for? Hmm, where can I find that thing that people are willing to pay money for? Hmm. Am I willing to do what is required to obtain the object so that I can give it to somebody else to get money? Right, that's 95% of all business and all success, those things. Are people willing to pay for something? Can you get something basically at a lower cost to you? Are you willing to do it? If the answer is yes, you score money. If the answer is no, you go on and find something else. So again, when I was a kid, I had zero, I had zero compunction. I had zero problem diving into the dumpsters behind bars uh, in order to get me lots and lots and lots and lots of aluminum cans. Was not a problem for me. Now to be clear, now to be clear, as a 40 year old, I sure as hell hope I don't have to do that again. 
<laughs> that is one of those good stories. It's good. It's good that I did that back when I was a kid. Uh, don't want to do that again. And so when I start talking about going after ducks, basically what I'm doing right now is I have found the most absurd fucking project you can possibly find. All right, going out and videoing ducks is horribly absurd, stupidly absurd, obnoxiously absurd. Who would waste their time filming ducks? But what I'm trying to show you folks as I go out there to film ducks is that, and film ducks and film scenery and film all that kind of stuff, is that the exact same processes, the exact same mentality required to go out and film ducks are the same mentality that will be required to go out and sell and deploy IoT systems. Is the same mentality that will be required to go out and do consulting. It's basically, you have to go out, you have to figure out what your goal is. You know, what is your goal? Why do you care? Then you have to figure, are you able to go out and actually be able to accomplish the goal that you're going after? So for me, right, so, so what is my goal? I wanna go out, I'm going to video scenery, right? So that's the thing, so, okay. Then I think, am I willing to do that? Well, again, I travel and I adventure and I do all this stuff anyway. So stopping every once in a while to take a five minute clip, that definitely seems like something I can do. Right, do I have the resources that are required to do this? Uh, am I willing to have a video camera? I already got an AX53. Uh, got, just got myself a brand new MacBook computer. Okay, so I've got those resources. And then from there, you go out and you find out, you figure out all the little specialty tasks and specialty skills that are required in order to achieve your objective. Like one of the things that I found, very interesting, very interesting. So I got some complaints in my last video camera where people said it was pixelated. It was pixelated. That didn't make any sense. 1080p, 60 frame per second, 60x optical zoom. It shouldn't be pixelated. But one of the things that I found out, one of the things I found out, this is very curious, being here on the East Coast, the East Coast is a very humid environment. So humid means there's a lot of water in the air. So when you go out and you look, you just look out there, wherever, um, you don't really notice the humidity. But the thing is, is when you zoom in, especially to 60x, uh, this isn't a good day for it, but basically what you can start to see is that there is a fog and if the humidity is a little higher than it is today, it starts to pixelate things. It makes it start to look like things are pixelated. And so like what I found out, those stupid little, little, you know, you don't know until you've done it, is that even if you have a 60X zoom, you do have to be careful on how you zoom into particular images because if the day is very wet and very moist and very humid, you can zoom in and technically you've zoomed in, but you've got a whole wall of water vapor between you and the object you've zoomed into and that's going to screw up the shot, right? So it's all those little skills that you learn by going out there and doing the tasks. So basically what I'm doing by like going out and filming ducks is I am using and just an obnoxiously absurd business concept uh, or goal, I suppose, to show you how you can go out there and accomplish things on your own. Basically, again, it's the resources, money in, money out. How much money do you have coming in? How much money do you have coming out? So what can you pay for? So like, I'll be going to New York City, uh, maybe next week. Depends on how things go. Uh, and so money in, money out. As I've talked about, uh, the money that I'm making off of uh, this particular channel is enough to pay the rent, getting close to being able to pay a mortgage. So I look at it, but it's not El what Eli the computer, like what Eli the computer guy used to make. Oh, that was a whole lot of money. That was some good money. I'm not making that right now. And so I look at it. And so like going to something like New York City, and this is an important thing to think about with accomplishing tasks, right? So I have to go from Baltimore to New York City, right? That seems like a simple enough thing. But again, as a business concept, you have to look at money coming in and money going out. So back when I was Eli the computer guy, I was flush with money. So basically I could pay for a cella to go up to New York City and back. And so a cella costs what, $230 each way? So I could drop $460, somewhere between $300 to $460 in order to do a round trip ticket to New York City. And it made sense, it made business sense for me, right? More than enough money was coming in, so in order to be able to hop on a train, I would pay the parking or whatever, I would go up there, I would come back. Well, now I start looking at it, it's like, hey, right, from a business perspective, money's not coming in like it used to. Money's not coming in like it used to. Well, 
It's not like I'm not gonna go to New York just because money isn't coming in like it used to. So I'd sit there and I start looking at the math. What you find out is that if you take a mega bus, if you take a mega bus, you can get up to New York City for like $21, somewhere between $21 to $30 each way. And you don't even have to pay for parking. So again, stupid little business things. Uh, if, you, if you use Amtrak out of Penn Station in Baltimore City, I think it's like 20 some odd dollars a day in parking. So if I spend three days in New York City, just for transportation, it's gonna cost me somewhere between then 360 to like $520 just in transportation. Whereas if I go buy Megabus, right? Even $30, even $30 if I get all the upgrades, I pay $30 each way, that's 60 bucks, but there's no parking. So there's these MTA, oh, I don't know what they're called. I haven't used them in the past. Like ride share, there's like these ride share parking lots. So that's where the mega buses leave from. So it's free parking, multi-day free parking there. So basically you go and I, I get to New York City. I still get to New York City so I can do what I need to do. But this way, it cost me $60 instead of $520 or whatnot. That takes a little bit longer. It takes a little bit longer instead of, uh, instead of two hours to get up there. Supposedly it takes you like three and a half, four hours to get up there. But these are the kind of decision things that I want you folks to be thinking about. Because again, so, so many of the times that I see people fail in trying to uh, obtain their goals, and again, people very rarely fail, they usually give up, is because they have these asinine ideas. They have these concepts, right? Well, in order to get to New York City, I have to drive. Well, if you drive, you're gonna be paying for gas. You're gonna be paying a shit ton of tolls. Oh my golly. When I got up to New Hampshire, I was floored with how many tolls I had to pay. Like, I thought the tolls used to be bad. Tolls now just got obnoxious. You pay a lot of money in tolls, you pay a decent amount of money in gas, and then you get up to New York City, and you're paying like $60 plus a day for parking, right? So if you're gonna drive up to New York City for, let's say again, be up there for three days, then $60 a day plus for parking, that means it's gonna cost you um, on the order of, let's go this way. Um, is this the way I wanna go? I don't know, which way do you think I should go? Uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know, don't know. Anyways, uh, so, so you're gonna pay $60 a day in parking. So let's say if you're up there three days, that's gonna be $180 in parking alone. Plus you're gonna have to pay for gas. So, oh, I don't know, it's 200 miles away or something. Um, so 400 miles around trip. Let's say you get 30 miles to the gallon. Uh, I don't know, you know, that's gonna cost you another now let's say 30 bucks, uh, pretty, pretty conservatively. So that's gonna put you up to 200 to $10, and you're gonna have to pay all those tolls. And those tolls are at least gonna run you $30, probably $40, right? So let's say it's gonna cost you $260, right? So you don't have $520 for a sell. You don't have $260 uh, in order to drive, plus you've gotta do the driving. Um, and so you sit there, and you're like, yeah, how am I gonna do this? Eli, I can't do this. You, Eli, you talk about going to these places, you talk about going to these events, but Eli, some of us don't have money like you do. Some of us don't have the ability to drop, you know, 210 or 560 or whatever dollars just in transportation. But that's where I can go, and I can go, well, look, look, you can also take mega bus. A mega bus is somewhere between $21 to $30, so you can have $60 to go up to New York City. Again, paying $60 to go up New York City, that's one of those things that puts things, puts the, the ability to do something within reach. Still gotta come up with $60, but again, $60 is something that somebody on minimum wage can come up with. Again, I mean, and that's, that's where I, I think a lot of people think I get egotistical or arrogant, when I'm really not. I mean, I understand if you can't get $520 together just for transportation, but, that, but so many people hyper-focus on like, that's the only way. I know, you look at all these other ways to do it. Again, the Megabus has $60 for transportation. That's something that most people, again, even minimum wage can afford. And so again, going up to New York City, got me looking at places to stay. Some places to stay cost $500 a night. Some places to stay cost, you know, $100 or $50 a night. So the idea here is as I go up there to look for ducks, to film ducks, I can show you all these different opportunities. So basically, you can get things accomplished. And as I say, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's all the same stuff. I'm telling you what, I'm telling you. That's where I get so frustrated with people. That's why I get so frustrated with kids especially. All these little fucking whiny ass noobs. I'm telling you, I am telling you. It's not even a joke. I'm not even being a smart ass. So much, so much of what I use 
today to be successful simply goes back to when I was diving into dumpsters in order to find aluminum cans. I'm telling you what, again, there's technical skills at this point, it's technical skills. But if you look at the raw, if you look at the raw mentality, if you look at the raw, the raw drive and motivators and all of that kind of stuff, it all goes back to when I was eight or nine years old and somebody told me, people will pay you money to recycle aluminum cans. And so I said, okay, mom, can I go out on the beach and pick up aluminum cans? My mom said, well, sure. Hey, my kid's gonna go up, pick up litter, and he's gonna make money. How can I say no to that? I'm not really sure I ever explained to her <laughs> how I scaled up my operation. I'm not sure, I may, I may, even as an Aspie, I may have been smart enough not to explain how I scaled up that operation. But it's the same thing. All it is is, hey, people are willing to pay money for that. Are you willing to do what it takes in order to get the money? And again, like I say, it's that whole, it's that whole resource thing. You know, if you can't pay this much money to do it, can you pay this much money? Can you do something else? So that's what I'm trying to do here with the ducks. The ducks is just, the ducks is a placeholder. The ducks is a placeholder. If you want to create a web design company, that's your duck. You got a web design duck. You want to create a construction company? You got a construction duck, right? If you want to, I don't know, go film ducks, probably not recommend you go film ducks um, <laughs> I'm not sure I'm not sure how many uh, how many YouTube cam how many YouTube channels that film ducks are required in this world but basically that's a thing so you come and I give you the advice you know and that's a whole like the advice that I can give where like with filming ducks some people are like well how do you make money filming ducks but it's just like the little advice that I can give you where I don't actually plan to make money off of the filming ducks themselves so the fail normal channel I actually took off uh, monetization of the Fail Normal channel. Again, one of the weird things of I'm not really sure how YouTube is going to exist in however many years since you can upload content and deliver content and not monetize it at all. But anyways, so I took off all the monetization from the actual Fail Normal channel. But then, but that's where I try to explain that you can make money in ways that people don't necessarily realize you're making money. So I'm not making money from the filming the ducks themselves. I'm making money from documenting, as Gary Vaynerchuk would say, documenting the process of filming ducks. So this thing that you think that I'm making money off of, I actually make no money off of. This other thing that seems kind of weird and odd, that's where I'm actually making the money. It's that kind of stuff, that kind of advice that I can try, try to give you. Because we're in a wacky new world. We are, we are in a wacky new world. All these kids, all these people want paint by numbers way to success. And I just don't see it. I just don't, I just don't see how you're gonna get to paint by numbers success. Uh, 2017 and past. I mean, you just see where all the money is, right? Anything that can be commoditized, anything that can be widgetized, they're driving down the value of, right? Whether it's McDonald's hamburgers or the poor bastard that flips McDonald's hamburgers, right? If they can commoditize that, Whatever task it is, they're driving, they're driving the, uh, the salary and the, the, uh, how much money you can make through the floor. So basically, the only way that I see that you can be successful really to make money is either one, get into a unionized job when you've really got a good union, which there aren't as many of those anymore as there used to be, or go out there and again, figure out what it is your specific, like what is your hyper-specific niche where you can just, you can just make bank on that thing. You don't do everything. You don't do everything for everyone, buddy. You find that one specific thing where you can be an expert in it. And it's, that's the thing is, is the market, the market needs to be big enough for you to make your crap ton of money, but not so big any other competitor thinks that it's viable, right? In order to find that kind of stuff, those kind of markets, those kind of businesses to get into, that's where you've got to go out there and you've got to be creative. It's not so much about getting the MCSE or anything like that anymore. It's about figuring out, okay, what, what are the solutions that people are willing to pay for? How can I figure out a low cost way of delivering the solutions? And then am I willing to do that a thousand times over? So that is the rather long winded version of what is a duck. A duck is just a placeholder that we're going to happen to get pictures of. <laughs> it's a pretty placeholder, it's a pretty placeholder. 
So anyways, back to the good old truck here. Hopefully we'll be taking the good old truck out to some fancy new cool places as we go with this little adventure. Uh, next week, well yeah, well so I guess next week, next week we do the zoo. So I guess next week we'll probably do DC a day or two. Maybe the week after that we do New York. Maybe the week after that we do New York. Probably the week after that we do New York. Do the mega bus. See how the mega bus goes. A little scared about the mega bus. <laughs> As again, I've gone, I've gone coast to coast about every way you can go coast to coast. Yeah, mega bus sounds pretty bad. <laughs> Starting to have flashbacks. Starting to have flashbacks when I took Greyhound coast to coast. Oh my golly. Baltimore to San Francisco via, was it Waco, Texas on a Greyhound bus. That was fucking horrible. So I don't know. We'll see how the mega bus goes. But that's, that's, that's what you're here for. To get... To, to hear what I have to say. Maybe it'll be great. Maybe it'll be great. I'll be like, hey, $21, it was a great experience. Or I might be like, hey, $21, it was a shit experience, but it was $21. It was $21. And that's the whole thing. It's not, it's not whether you want to take a mother bus, mega bus, right? It's not about whether you want to take a mega bus. It's whether you're willing to take a mega bus. That's really, that's the kind of thing you gotta ask yourself. Anyways, with that, I'll call it a day. I'm gonna take my uh, my little messenger bag here with a Mac in it. Gonna go to a Panera, go to a Starbucks. Gonna do some video editing. We're gonna see how the MacBook, uh, the, the, the new MacBook Pro works out. I have to say that I'm liking it. I really do. Uh, when I got the MacBook Pro yesterday and I first turned it on and first started to use it, it was a dog. Oh my God, it was a dog. I really, like, that first half an hour, hour I was using the MacBook Pro yesterday, I was like, well, this is going back. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not joking. Like, it was just, it was slow, it was just clunky, it just didn't, just didn't seem to work right. But I have to say, after it went through the whole update process, um, now it works amazingly well. I have to tell you, that, that, that 13 inch MacBook Pro with the eight gigs of RAM works better than my 2013 fully loaded 15 inch MacBook Pro. So actually, what's a kind of ironic with, the, with this MacBook Pro, I mean, we'll have to see, we'll, we'll have to verify, um, but this may actually end up being my main computer. My, my goal, my, my original thought with it was that it was going to be like my traveling computer, like go to Panera, go to New York City, this was the computer I was gonna take with me. Uh, but I do have to say, now the more that I use it, the more I'm thinking it may actually end up replacing the 15 inch MacBook Pro. But we'll have to see, we'll have to see. So anyways, See you folks, uh, see you folks in the next video. And uh, yeah, think about, think about how you're gonna go out there and get your ducks. And just remember, just remember, anytime you're bitching, moaning, complaining about what your job is, remember when I was that eight, nine year old, 10 year old kid, I was literally diving into dumpsters in order to collect aluminum cans so I could get my five bucks a day for comic book money. <laughs> so, so I do have to say, Probably for a lot of folks out there, <laughs> when I was a kid, I was probably doing a worse job than you are doing now. So, uh, so just uh, something to think about, what you're willing to do in life, what people want out of you, how to be successful. Well, see you folks in the next bit.